This is my homemade laser cutter. I designed and built it back in 2018, and ever since it's been hard at work producing maps for our small business. And today's a hard day because it's time to say goodbye. We're long overdue for an upgrade, and we're gonna be replacing it with a brand new laser cutter out in the workshop. And while this has always been the plan, it's still a little bittersweet. So let's give the old machine a proper send off by using it to explore how CO2 laser cutters work. We'll go step by step through each of its systems, using visual effects and animations to best demonstrate the purpose of each one. With this context, you'll be able to appreciate what a huge upgrade our new machine will be. Stick around and we'll be walking through its design as well. Whether you're interested in your own laser cutter or maybe you're just curious to learn more about how they work, we're gonna cover a lot of information today and this is a topic I've been really excited to get to. Thank you to Xtool for sponsoring today's video. When you're learning about machines like this, it's helpful to split it up into smaller chunks. And we're gonna start with the most important one, the laser itself and how we generate it. My machine uses a CO2 laser tube, and I'm gonna give a really simplified overview of how it works. We have a contained gas that we're gonna excite with high voltage electricity. We put this energy into the system, and some of it gets released as infrared light. We have a pair of mirrors, one located at each end, and these bounce the light back and forth as it grows stronger. The mirror on the left is slightly transparent, so once the light builds up enough strength, it will be able to shine through and exit the tube. Next, we use a mirror to bounce the beam downwards through a lens, which will focus it into a very small point. And now we can use this to vaporize material. We can fully cut through, or we can reduce the power and just use this to engrave the surface. This cutting and engraving is the main function of the entire machine, but it's not particularly useful unless we can move it around. And this brings us to the next major component, the drive system. The Y-axis gantry is going to consist of two rails and carriages on either side of our work area. In the X-axis will be a single set that runs between these. Working together, we can now move the laser head to any position within our work area. Our laser tube is mounted in the back of the machine, and it doesn't move, so we'll need a way to direct the beam over to our lens. To do this, we'll add two mirrors. One will be fixed right next to the laser tube, and the second will be mounted on the moving gantry. And now you can see that this beam will be maintained through every possible position of the laser head. These are what I would consider to be the two primary systems of the machine. The next three that we're gonna cover are still really important, but they play more of a support role. The first is called the air assist, and in order to show why it's important, let's run the machine with it turned off. First of all, it's scorching the material pretty badly and not cutting very well. It's also depositing soot up onto the laser lens, which is gonna build up and reduce its efficiency over time. But most importantly, we're creating the risk of a larger fire within our machine. To fix this, we're gonna pipe some compressed air into the laser head. This will flow out of the nozzle and down onto the work surface, enveloping the laser beam. With this turned on, we get a much cleaner cut with far less scorching, and the flow of air will prevent any soot from making its way up to the laser lens. The airstream also helps push vaporized material out of the beam path so you can get a deeper cut at the same speeds. This compressed air flows through a small tube that travels along the gantries and originates back at this small air compressor pump. So next we're gonna have to deal with the smoke that we're producing with this machine. No matter what you're running on here, you don't wanna be breathing in any of the particles that you're gonna be generating. So you'll need a device that can draw this air outside of your building or some kind of filtration system to scrub the air. On this machine, I'm just using an inline blower which pulls fresh air up into the enclosure and across the cutting surface. It then travels through this duct before it eventually gets released outside. And the last system will be the water chiller. While the laser tube is operating, it's generating some waste heat that we'll need to deal with. If not, we'll damage our laser tube and shorten its life. So we pump water through this channel to help absorb it. And then we can take this down to the chiller where we can get rid of it. 
To run all of this, we're gonna need a controller. And this is the brain for the whole machine. When I upload a file, this device takes the instructions, moves the gantries to the correct positions, and tells the laser tube when to energize. It's also controlling the subsystems and making sure that everything is running properly. And that's it, we've covered every basic component of this machine. Now let's put it to use. A question I get pretty often is, why did I want to build this myself? Well, in 2017, I was visiting my wife, then girlfriend at her college, when she showed me the epilogue laser they had access to in her architecture studio. She had to pull an all-nighter to finish a project, so I stuck around and passed the time by designing my first map. That's where this hobby first started. From there, I was able to find a machine at my local library that was open to the public on a first-come, first-served basis. Once I started thinking about my own business, I knew I'd need something at home, but back in 2018, there weren't quite as many options available on the market for consumer laser cutters. You had plenty of larger commercial options, but we were just starting to get more maker-friendly machines like the Glowforge. I felt like there wasn't a good middle option between the two, and by designing and building my own, I could have a much more capable machine for far less. I built this machine all in for about $4,000, and at that time, if I wanted to buy one with similar specs, I would have been spending much more than that. And lastly, I'm an engineer, and I knew this would be a good opportunity to add something a little more unique to my resume. But here we are seven years later, and more companies have joined the consumer laser cutter market. I had originally planned to build this next laser cutter as well, but the options available today have made this a little harder to justify. I still think I'll return to the idea in the future, but for right now, there are a few other projects I'd like to prioritize. One of the newer consumer machines to hit the market has been the P2 from Xtool. I've been keeping my eye on it since its release in 2023, and they announced an updated version of the machine last September called the P2S. It looked like the perfect machine to put in the shop, so we were really excited when Xtool offered to send us one. We have not been given any talking points or direction from Xtool. All they asked is that we make an honest comparison to the machine that this will be replacing. The P2S has been supporting our business for over a month now, and I'm gonna take you through six aspects of this machine that have been a major improvement for us. Just like my existing laser, it has the same size carbon dioxide tube at 55 watts. The cutting area is a little smaller at 305 by 600 millimeters, but it still fits the 12 by 24 inch sheets of plywood that I use for all of my standard products. They do also make a riser base for this machine, along with a pass-through that would allow me to run larger items in the future if I need it. Let's start with the first difference that you've probably already noticed, appearance. I used 8020 aluminum tubing to frame my machine, and that was a great option for flexibility, but it takes up a lot of space and adds considerable weight to the machine. The P2S is made mostly from sheet metal and injection molded plastics, which allows it to pack all of its components into this sleek enclosure. And it was a nice bonus to have two color options available to choose from. Next, let's take a look at the laser head. Remember the focal lens from earlier? The height of this above our work surface is very important. If we're cutting, we want this beam to converge within the material. And if we're engraving, our image will have a better resolution if this focal point is right at the top surface of the material. This brings up one of the bigger downsides to my machine. My laser head is fixed, so if I want to adjust the height between the lens and the workpiece, I have to raise and lower this entire work bed and then re-level it every time. I had originally planned to have a motorized bed that I could automatically adjust to suit my material thickness, but I never got around to building it. Instead, I'm stuck with these four bolts that need to be loosened before I manually move and re-level the bed. One of my favorite parts about the P2S is that the bed stays in place but the lens can move up and down on this tiny lead screw. It makes so much more sense to just move this small component instead of moving the entire work surface. And this also opens up some cool new possibilities like engraving on curved surfaces. Up here, we have a small sensor that can automatically measure your material thickness and adjust the lens height accordingly. So even if you have a slight bow to your cutting surface, you can make sure the lens is at the perfect height without having to do any manual measurement. Let's run the same project on both machines so we can make a fair comparison on speed. The old machine is able to move the X gantry at a max speed of 300 millimeters per second, but the P2S is able to double this at 600 millimeters per second. With both machines using a 55 watt laser, you might think that the cutting speeds would be comparable, but the P2S is still gonna be much faster here. 
And this shows just how important air assist can be. The P2S is able to generate a much higher air pressure with a dual piston air compressor. When we compare the cut edges, you'll notice a pretty big difference between the two. The air compressor used on my current machine is a linear air pump, which works by pushing the air towards its exit using a mechanical plunger. And as you can imagine, this creates spikes in the air pressure leaving the device. And this oscillation shows up in our cutting edge. By using two separate pistons, the P2S can eliminate the surging and get a much more stable flow at the laser head. Not only does this give the edge a much cleaner look, but it allows the beam to cut better because it more effectively pushes debris and soot out of the way. This next feature is something that I wasn't thinking about at all when I was designing my machine, and it's the use of these two cameras inside of the enclosure. This makes it so much easier to get your project aligned with the raw material you've placed in the machine. Before, I had to set up my wood and run a border sequence where the laser would trace the full extent of the project. But now I just take a picture and use that as my guide with the Xtool design software. This has sped up my process immensely, and you can even use the software to batch process multiple projects. You just align the file on one of your parts and it gets automatically applied to the rest, regardless of their orientation within the machine. For dealing with the exhaust fumes, I was planning on putting a hole in this back wall and building a chimney to take all of the exhaust up above the roof line. But then I started looking into this unit a little bit more. This is called the AP2, and it's designed to filter the exhaust well enough that you don't have to worry about discharging it outside. It has six different filters that the exhaust has to pass through, along with a pair of cyclone dust separators at the top to catch the bigger pieces. It connects wirelessly to the laser using the small USB dongle, and then it just automatically turns on and off when the laser is running. Super easy to set up. I was pretty skeptical of how well this unit would perform, but I've been impressed. I haven't tested it yet with acrylic, but I can't smell the wood at all when this thing is running. Just to be on the safe side, I am going to be installing an ERV ventilation system in our office, so we'll be exchanging fresh air with the outside. We set this machine up in the evening, and we had finished orders the next afternoon. It's been an awesome addition to the shop, and now I feel a lot better about parting ways with our old machine and I'm happy to say it's gonna be getting a new life. A coworker of mine has expressed interest in it, and he's a talented engineer, so I'm excited to see what modifications and improvements he's able to add. If you'd like to learn more about Xtool and their products, I'll have a link in the description below. We have plenty of other projects in the works, and I'm really excited to bring you along for all of them. No matter what we're working on, animations and visual effects will always be a big part of our videos. I make all of these myself using the free animation software Blender, and it can be very time consuming. But the truth is, I love working on these videos, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the feedback we've received on this channel so far. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one.